Hello, in this video I will show some practical tasks that can be solved using CL Color Grids in 3D LUT Creator. As you already know, CL Grids allow very fine work with the brightness of the image. Let's start with this example. I have a red car which I will try to recolor into a golden look. To do this, I will first recolor the car in yellow on the AB grid. First I change the hue. Then I make the color more saturated, and now I make it brighter. I press the shift key and pull up. This is the color I got. It does not look gold at all. Let's fix it on CL grids. I select the eyedropper and rotate the axes of the grids so that one of them passes just through the color of the car. Now the color is located along the right border of the lower grid. To get the golden look, I will increase the contrast within the same color. That is, I will make dark yellows completely dark, and I will make light yellows even lighter. By doing so, I get the feeling that the surface of the car is glossy, not matte. In order to divide the dark and light areas more accurately, I will change the grid size. Let's see where the shadows are on the grid, and where the lights are. And now, I separate them on the grid by changing the brightness. I get this result. This is the before, and that is the after. If you do not like something, then you can change the color transition from one tone to another on the grid. Now, I'll try to cover the car with a purple film. I change its color on the AB grid. Let's make it more saturated. I rotate the CL grids so that one of them passes through our color, change the grid size, and now I increase the contrast. This is the before, and that is the after. In this case, I controlled the contrast within the same color. I increased it. But you can do it the other way. You can reduce the contrast. I will reset all the settings, turn the grid, and fix the neutrals. And now I choose the tool that pulls the points to the current color, and then I will be clicking on the grid in the car. Now, our car became absolutely flat, like it was filled up with a red color. In this case, I reduced the contrast within the same color. This is the before, and that is the after. In the next video, I will show how to use this technique in practice. In the meantime, let's consider another example. I load this image that is already familiar from a practical lesson with the AB grid. I will recolor the highlights again in orange, but I will make it on the CL grid. First, I change the blue glow to the orange on the AB grid. Now I go to the CL tab and rotate the grid. The bright part of the glow, which will be yellow, is here on the grid, and the dark part, which will be red-orange, is here. I select one point, hold down the Shift key, and move the mouse. Let me remind you that this is the way we change the brightness on the AB grid. On the CL grid, this action changes the hue. So the dark part of the highlights became redder. Since the remaining points are not fixed, the change in the hue will also be transmitted to them, but with a less extent. Now I will select a point in the highlights and recolor them into yellow. I will compare before and after. Thus, I color the bright areas of the glow in yellow and the dark areas of the glow in red-orange. You can make a teal and orange grading too. Orange is already there, all you have to do is to create the teal color. I will add color to neutrals and shadows. I will make the car a bit turquoise. Here is the before, and there is the after. In this case, I changed the hue of one color in lights and shadows, and recolored the highlights on the car. Before that, I did the same on the AB grid. It is up to you to decide where it is more convenient to do this. Sometimes it happens that the AB grid is already used for color correction, and in order to keep it, you can use the CL grid. Let's continue to practice with lightness and hue in that image. I rotate the grid. In this image, I want to increase both the contrast and color variability. I again make the highlights yellow and the shadows are redder. And now I will increase the contrast. I'll make the shadows darker and the highlights lighter. 
By changing the midtones, you can adjust the smoothness of the transition from the shadows to the highlights. Here is the before and after. I increased the contrast and achieved greater variability in shade. In this example, on the CL grid, I darken the sky, I rotate the grid, and now I'll make the blues darker and a bit more saturated. Let's see now at 100% scale. This is the before, and that is the after. To prevent artifacts, you can soften the transitions from one color to another by moving the intermediate points. Let's see the whole image. Try to do the same in Photoshop. Note that I did not get artifacts, despite the fact that the picture was in JPEG. Usually people use gradient mask to darken the sky, but in such cases the clouds would also darken. In 3D Luck Creator, the darkening on CL grids is very similar to the effect of the polarization filter. The white clouds have remained the same, only the blue color got darker. If this lesson was useful to you, please like the video. In the next part of the practice, I will talk about other interesting applications of CL grids. Bye everyone!